All right, welcome back to Washington Watch. As I mentioned, we are broadcasting live from Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg, Virginia, which is the site of our first Pray, Vote, Stand Summit. Now, for those that uh, have been listening for a while, you know that we've had annually the Values Voter Summit, but we, we changed this year. Uh, actually, we transitioned last year because of COVID. We did it virtually, uh, but we... Uh, we really want to lean into the source of our strength. You'll notice that the uh, I close every program with uh, Ephesians six thirteen to stand, and in Ephesians six chapter uh, chapter six verse ten, Paul says, "Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might." And when we wrestle with all these political things that we've been talking about here, these policy things, they're real, they're significant, they're important, but the source of our strength is in the Lord. And so we believe that the church stands at this pivotal moment in which, yes, we've got to be engaged. I'll never tell you we shouldn't be engaged, but it starts with prayer. It starts with that foundation. Pray, vote, but we should vote our biblical values, and then we must stand for biblical truth regardless of what may be the outcome of any election. That's our calling. Our calling is our allegiance should not be to a party. Our allegiance is to the truth, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for that reason, we have uh, we've shifted to this Pray, Vote, Stand Summit, and we've shifted to doing it not in a convention center or a hotel, but rather in a church. And we've got a great partner uh, that I've known for a long time. I've been able to I had the privilege of speaking in his church a number of times. And that is Pastor Gary Hamrick, senior pastor here at Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg, Virginia. Pastor Gary, welcome to the program again. Thank you, Tony. It's always good to be with you. Well, and I, I want to again thank you for hosting uh, the Pray Boat Stand Summit here at your, your church. Beautiful facility and uh, just grateful for your partnership. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, you've got a mug there. That's I a do. Stand I, uh, mug, I know. And that's going to be this yours. Clears my throat. So that's thank right. you. So uh, it's a privilege always to partner with you, Tony. I thank God for what FRC is doing, and uh, I just feel like I'm kind of along for the ride. But you know, it's important for the church to step up and wake up and get engaged. So I'm I'm proud to host this tonight and the next couple of days. Um, our prayer is that Christians will really rise to the occasion and make a difference in our culture. I know sometimes it can be, you know, a little discouraging because we want to see more progress. And I try to remind people, look, you know, we have to remember this is not heaven. And so we're working out things on earth until Jesus comes, but he calls us, you know, to, to be salt and light and to be a part of what he wants to do in our world. So I'm excited for the church to be engaged with, with it this year. Now, I, I was trying to think when we first connected, it's probably been 10, 10 or more years ago, and, um, you know, we've, we've had a chance to visit. I've, I've had the privilege of preaching to your church a number of times. We, we hosted a, actually a Pray, Vote, Stand Town Hall meeting right. uh, yeah. back in February, I think it was. And um, you have you really taken some public stands. Uh, when a lot of churches closed down, you were open. Um, and as a result, your church has exploded yeah. in growth. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen people have a real hunger for, uh, let, me, let, me, let me say it this way, the more the culture has veered in one direction, then we've seen people have a real hunger for, somebody tell me the truth. Right. Somebody, t I got an email last week, a guy in our congregation, and he said, Gary, he said, I just said to my wife, and we're raising four daughters, that it's good to come to Cornerstone to know we're not going crazy. And I thought that his sentiments reflect a lot of people, which is that when they hear all of these weird things and uh, the redefining of marriage, redefining of gender, all of this stuff that's such chaos and nonsense that people need to come to church just to know I'm not going crazy because right. I don't embrace yeah. those things. And so, um, yeah, I have felt like a passion to help people understand what the truth is and for them to know they're not going crazy. That's so important because what's happened in our culture, it, it's, it's turned upside down. Yeah. And so there, there has to be an anchor point, something we can tether to in, in the truth. And, and here's, I see this happen. I've, I've watched this unfold over the last decade as the legacy media, not at first it became indifferent toward a, a, a Christian or a biblical worldview. 
Now it's hostile. And so if you're a Christian out there, just like this, this guy raising his four daughters, everything they would see on TV would be counter to what they know to be truth. And I'm, I'm even talking about like Fox News. Fox News won't cover this from from a from a and, and I'm not saying they would be biblical, but I know I used to be on there and they allowed me to talk about those things, but not anymore. And so if you're out there as a Christian and your worldview is never affirmed, you right. feel like you're alone. That's right. And and with so few churches, and there there are a number, we're building that number, but sadly, not many pastors are actually preaching the truth. Now, there are some good ones out there, and we we, we work with them, and we're grateful for them. We pr- I pray for them. Yeah. Um, but we need more of them that will preach the truth, the Word of God, so that people know that they're not going crazy. Yeah. The world is. Well, a mutual friend of ours, Jack Hibbs. Who um, will be here. He's one of our speakers tomorrow. here tomorrow night. Yeah. Jack told me, he said, Gary, you know, one of the good things that have come out of COVID is some churches that yeah. needed to close have closed. <laughs> yeah. And I agree with him. Um, it's sad. It's sad that, you know, you can't look at every church and say they're teaching the word and they're standing for truth. Um, and so for people who are looking for that, they're looking for the Bible, they're looking for truth. They're, they're starting to flock to, to churches like yeah. ours and others. They are. And I, and I hear it. I hear yeah. when I travel around the country. People will have seen me here and they say, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I watch Pastor Gary. I watch Pastor Jack. They're looking for truth. Yeah. And it's, you know, like Jesus said, when Jesus invited people to follow him, he didn't say, hey, go get your picnic basket and let's go have some fun. Yeah, right. He said, deny yourself, right. take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. And I think we have taken Christ's call of commitment mm-hmm. And we've we've watered it down to where it's meaningless. And so why bother? Yeah. And so those who truly want to follow Christ are looking for the churches who will stand as a beacon of light in a land that is growing increasingly dark. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. And, you know, I take comfort in, in men that have gone before us, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. You know, he said silence in the face of evil is itself yeah. evil. Yeah. And God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. And so now there's a cost, though. I mean, yes. Dietrich Bonhoeffer lost his life. He was, you know, executed by, by the Nazis in 1945, I think it was. And so there's sometimes a cost. And we have to count the cost, too. Like you said, mm-hmm. take up your cross. You know, it's there's a cost to all this. But Paul said to, to live is Christ. That's right. To die is gain. gain. Yeah. And and when you have that type of orientation, you know, it's all good. Yeah. That's it's right. all good. Yeah. Because if we live, we're we're glorifying Christ. We're pointing people to it. And and I this is what really bothered me during the, the COVID with a number of the churches and, and Christian and, and some Christian. Not, and I got to be careful because I don't want to paint everything with a broad sure. brush right. because I am so grateful for the churches. And there are many churches that that open, stayed open. Yeah. Many Christians who lived boldly. But we shouldn't be afraid of all people. Yeah. We should not be afraid. Yeah. And so when we saw this virus, churches, you know, hunkered down. They uh-huh. closed their doors. Christians were afraid to come out of their homes. And look, I don't minimize it. My daughter is an ER nurse who worked with COVID patients. I know we've lost 700,000 people from it. It's serious. I understand that. But to live as Christ, to die is gain. And so in the midst of a crisis, when we can live with confidence, then we can point others people, as as Peter said, give them the the reason for the hope that's within us. Yeah, that's right. COVID and culture. Yeah. Those things have caused people to have a lot of fear, to to have a lot of instability. And I've got a vaccine for both. Yeah, well, good. Jesus. And by by the way, there's no vaccine passport to get to heaven. That's right. News bulletin. I like that. (laughs) Was that Sunday sermon? No. (laughs) No, I just came up with that now. (laughs) Hey, well, by the way, folks, let uh, let me give you some information about the Pray, Vote, Stand Summit. Pastor Gary Hamrick's my guest here. He is the senior pastor here at Cornerstone Chapel, which is the host of our Pray, Vote, Stand Summit. And the, one of the reasons we're here, not only because of our friendship, but because you just happen to be at the epicenter of yeah. one of the biggest issues. And even yesterday, well, actually it was Monday, the attorney general, you know, as I talked about earlier, poked the bear by saying that uh, 
they're going to launch a task force into parents who are going to school board meetings, mm -hmm. you know, demanding that this indoctrination stop. That all started right here yeah. in Leesburg, Virginia. And it also, to go back a little further, started right here because one of the guys who uh, is actually going to be speaking, Tanner Cross, the PE teacher that stood up in a school board meeting, goes to church here. That's right. And it was because of your preaching, he was emboldened to stand up. Yeah. And the DOJ, I think this is the same thing you're referring to. The DOJ has now said that these parents who are so vocal are considered domestic. Well, the, the, to, to be totally to accurate. What, well, this is what the National School Board Association okay. wrote a letter to the president, and they are the ones that equated these parents to the domestic terrorism, asking okay. for the Department of Justice to step in. So, in essence, the Department of Justice is giving credence to okay. this claim yeah. by the school board association that these parents who are exercising their constitutional rights and biblical duty, I yeah. might add, to w look at what their children are being taught are being treated as if they were criminals. Yeah. And, and by the way, not to cut you off, no. but it's my radio show. That, yeah, <laughs> it is yours, not mine. <laughs> but the, uh, they didn't cite any evidence of yeah. violence or anything. They, nothing. Right. Nothing. It, it's just an attempt to intimidate. That's all this is. It's it's a strategy to intimidate, to silence the voices yes. of Christians like exactly. us who really yeah. want to speak up for truth. And and here in Loudoun County, actually, a, a circuit court judge yesterday uh, said that a the recall petition had to go forward for one of our school board members. We got enough signatures to recall one of our school board members, and we're working on others because of these policies that they are enacting. And so the judge has paved the way for that to move forward now. So we're we're hopeful for some change around here. Well, and that's going to be the focus of uh, several panels that we have during the day here at the Pray Vote Stand Summit. We'll have uh, a number of teachers that have uh, either um, you know confronted this, some have been removed from their yeah. positions. We have some that have been fired. They're going to be here and be a part of this. We've got a great lineup of uh, speakers. We'll be starting tonight at 7 p.m., and uh, let me just give, you, give our listeners a little bit uh, a sense of what will be happening tonight. We'll have former Congresswoman and presidential candidate Michelle Bachman. She will be here. Uh, we'll have Senator James Lankford and Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. Uh, they both will be here. and We'll be having a conversation about what's happening on Capitol Hill. Uh, pastor Andrew Brunson, uh, who was the pastor who was imprisoned in Turkey, and I had the, uh, the privilege of going over and, and bringing him home. Uh, he'll be here. Pastor Gary Hamrick will be closing us out tonight, bringing us around home and uh, and yeah. closing us out with the keynote address uh, tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, we, as you mentioned, we'll have Pastor Jack Hibbs will be here, Bishop Vincent Matthews, Mission President, Church of God in Christ, Oz Guinness, best-selling author, will be here, Al Robertson, host of Unashamed with uh, the uh, Duck Dynasty, uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Uh, we'll also be, uh, I think we'll be hearing from uh, Senator Josh Hawley of uh, Missouri. So that's uh, tomorrow night. And then Friday night, uh, we will uh, we'll have, uh, let, me get to, let me get to Friday night. We'll have Ali Stuckey, host of uh, Relatable. We'll have uh, Daryl Harrelson and Virgil Walker. Uh, Congressman Michael Waltz of uh, Florida, only Green Beret, uh, elected into uh, to Congress. Pastor Amado Wezar, he is the uh, you may, I don't know if you recall him, but he was uh, he's South Bay United Pentecostal Church in California. They were one of the churches that would not close down. They yeah. initially closed, but the Lord led them uh, to, to open back up. And they've got an amazing story of, uh, of literally a story of, of someone who, a gang member who gave their life to Christ the day before they were executed by another gang. Wow. Uh, it was uh, really an amazing story. Uh, and they actually won a lawsuit against the state of California, and, and the state of California had to pay them. Also, Pastor Carter Conlon, over general overseer of Times Square Church, uh, will be here. And uh, so, got a great, great lineup. That's just in the evenings. So I got a I'm lot. I'm trying to wonder day. how I made the A list. I mean, I listen to those oh, names. Oh, look, brother, those I've, are some I've heard you people. preach. I've heard you preach. Uh, and then we, we've got panels on international religious freedom. We've got panels on the the vaccine. Uh, critical race theory, what's happening in our public schools, what's happening in our military. Yeah. So we're covering the uh, the landscape over the next uh, 48 hours, and it's going to be a really, really good summit. So folks, if you can get here, 
jump in the car and start driving. I'll save you a seat. If not, if not, you can join us online at prayvotestand.org. And again, Pastor Gary, thanks so much for uh, hosting us. Look forward to the next two days. I look forward to it too, Tony, and what the Lord's going to do as a result of this time together. So thank you for for bringing your team here and, and for running this great program. We're just glad to host it. Well, and you've got a great team here at the church. Um, great, great group of people thank to work you. with. And we just uh, so appreciate you and what you guys are doing here in Leesburg, Virginia.